I've said a number of times on this show before that we as atheists kind of lucked out in terms of how wacky and stupid the religions we have to argue against are, right? Like the Bible could have been a very relevant book filled with historical facts, believable stories, fantastic advice, and prescient moral teachings. It's not, but even without an existent to God, it could have been, right? Like, like the, there are books that are filled with that shit. They're just not the Bible. And how much harder would our job be if we couldn't dismiss their holy book by pointing out that it endorses slavery and, or includes a talking donkey? Likewise, the religions themselves are nonsensical and contradictory. Like the problem of evil, perfect example. At least so far, that is an insurmountable hurdle for the people that we find ourselves debating. But it's not a problem inherent in theism, just in monotheism. And, and just if the God in that monotheistic tradition is omnibenevolent. Right. If they'd elected to go with a pantheon of gods with no one supreme over the others, they'd have no trouble at all explaining why we should worship this particular God, even if there is still evil in the world. They just elect to hamstring their argument in advance by claiming that their guy is omnipotent and omnibenevolent. So it's easy to think, or at least it's been easy for me to think in the past, that we just really got fortunate that none of the more logically defensible religions or holy books won out and became the major religions of today. But the more I reflect on it, the more I realize that luck doesn't really have anything to do with it. Their silliness is inevitable. See, the, the problem with religion, as always, is that it isn't true. It's bullshit. And no matter how good your bullshit is, you're eventually going to have to prop it up with more bullshit. Of course, you can actually get away with this for a very long time if A, you're a good liar, and B, you know that you're lying. And while that's almost certainly the case at the beginning of any religion, it can't be the case for long. So eventually, people will start seeking to answer the flaws inherent with the system, not with new lies, but with truths. And of course, truths never quite line up with the lies, so they have to start employing logical contortions. And if you do this long enough and you, and you leave it in the hands of smart enough people, you inevitably wind up with a convoluted web of nonsense filled with very obvious flaws that will make the job of future atheists easier and easier. Of course, when the underlying belief has truth value, it becomes easier to defend over time. Right? It was, for example, way easier to poke holes in evolution 100 years ago. I mean, I, I should say good holes, right? Since there's no solid floor to the intellectual depths that they'll plumb in their effort to deny the observable in this instance. But the point is, the more we study the evolution, the more questions about evolution we've been able to answer because evolution's true. But the more we study any particular religion, the more the questions just multiply. Consider the perfect example here, the Trinity. Now, if you knew you were lying and you knew that you were later going to have to defend that lie, you'd never come up with something as silly as a God that's part himself and part his kid and part a ghost, but all the same guy, but still different guys. There's literally no way to describe it without admitting how silly it is, right? But if you thought Jesus was real and God was real and there was just the one God, you kind of have to start divvying him up in this way. Add to that the fact that people want to deify the voice in their heads and you're kind of stuck with this weird ass tripartite God, right? And as clumsy as it is, it actually does some real work in the religion. I mean, you have to reconcile the fact that Jesus is all about peace and love and, and, and shit like that with all the evil shit that God does in the Hebrew Bible, right? So, you know, you want to claim continuity without being stuck with the baggage of the old stories. So you do the theological equivalent of Marvel invoking the multiverse. And when you really look into these things, you find that's always the cause. Look long enough at any wacky contradiction in Christianity or any religion older than its founder, really, and you're going to see some hole in the plot that it was originally created to spackle over. I mean, we don't know enough about ancient Judaism, but if we did, I'm sure we could even figure out what sillier implication Blom's talking donkey was meant to ameliorate. And, and that's a damn encouraging realization for two reasons, right? The first is that we didn't just luck out. Even if they came up with a brand new and improved theology tomorrow, we would know that over time it would inevitably get sillier and sillier until atheists could easily dunk on it without a running start. But the second, somewhat less obvious one, is that this process doesn't have any logical end point save the dissolution of the entire religion. In other words, all of the world's religions are still getting dumber, and they always will be.